if you need to edit your PDF, you may consider Zara. You have to go to their website and then under solution to PDF editor. And once you're there, you can use the tool. Now, Zara, I found it overall more like a design tool, kind of similar to Canva than a PDF editor, but it does a decent job editing PDFs. It doesn't have some basic things that you would expect a PDF editor to have, such as adding signature and maybe editing some of the form fields. But otherwise, it had some surprising options such as being able to replace the font throughout the whole existing PDF. It was pretty quick, user-friendly, although there were some options that I had trouble editing and I found a bit frustrating, which I will go over. So let's get started. Once you go to zara.com slash PDF dash editor, that's when you are asked to basically find your file. Once you upload your file, you can drop it or just find it on your computer then it asks you actually to create an account. I mean, it's not asking you to create an account before you find your file. So it, they're kind of doing this on purpose. And again, I just use my Gmail because I don't need another credential that I have to remember. Once you open the document, it's pretty clean interface, uh, nicely designed at the very top, you have some options. And at the very left, you have some options with you know, modifying the text, inserting images and some additional things. And on the right, it's pretty much like some of the formatting that's available for text and some of the options that you select on the left. To add a text, you select the text. And now you can see it's asking you if you want to do this as a heading, normal text and bullet points. And once you select it, you can type in in the text box and then you can modify it, make a bold, italic and so on. You will get a message that's saying missing characters. And basically what it does, it's selling you that the PDF is in a font that's not recognizable. It has a Lato, which is the font that I'm using in the PDF, but some of the styling is not available. You can actually replace it throughout the whole PDF, which is really useful. And, um, you know, because sometimes you might not be able to find the font that your original PDF is in. You can change the color of the font, customize the colors of your text, and you can also change the existing text, which is very useful because that's the main thing many times why you have to edit your PDF. What I found kind of frustrating is that the original text that I had, some of it was kind of messed up and some of the alignments were messed up. Some of the text was overflowing and I couldn't separate it. Some of it was in this one bounding box and I couldn't like align some of the text to the left. So I would have to pretty much retype it. You can cut and paste over the section. So that's helpful. So I could probably do that. And it had a big size of fonts available as well as it has this section of the fonts that are currently in the PDF. So that was really helpful. You can just replace it in case you can't find your font, but you can also see what fonts are being used in your PDF because many times you might not know. You would have to go through each section. Sometimes your PDFs might be in multiple fonts. Now, what I also like that you have these options, you can align the text. However, I couldn't fix some of these sections that I, again, they were originally my PDF. You can align sections and elements like images and, and different text boxes. However, I could not fix this. I could not move some of my sections. So I would probably have to select it and then cut and paste and create a new text or retype it but I could resize it. And I did see the alignment show up whenever I selected a section, you could see these, it would tell you pretty much if it's centered or not. Now you can also select the text and highlight it and change the highlight color. Now you can't white out and you can't redact. You could maybe remove the text or create a shape over it, but you couldn't do the actually redacting. Now you can add the link by selecting the text and just typing the address. And it does give you an option to maybe link to a page to another page with the new document. So you had some additional options. If you want to remove the link, you can also do this selecting the old link that I had there, and then going to the link option on the right over the text and then basically deleting the, the link and pressing enter, and then just removing the underline. Now, what I also like that I was able to remove this watermark that I previously had. Some editors don't let you do that. For images, you can select the image and remove it, click delete. And on the left, you have image icon and they give you options of images you can search for from Pixabay. So that's a kind of useful, but you can see that this is more like a design tool. You can also 
upload an image from your computer or URL. And once you have the image, you can just reposition, resize it, move it again and rotate if you need to. Now, what I also liked that you were able actually to layer things. So, you know, if you, let's say, have a pattern that you want to give to your PDF, you can do that. And at the very top, you have options of basically moving things backward, forwards, what have you. So that's a great thing you can do, especially if you're adding things on your PDF. It's very useful to be able to layer things in it. Now on the left, you also have thumbnails of your pages and you can easily rearrange them. And then if you want to delete something, you click the more option and click delete page. And you can also change the color of the page at the very top. There's this icon for the background color. You can select it and change it. And you can also, if you click the text option on the left, add headers and footers. Now it was kind of confusing a bit how to select these headers and footers because the footers were showing up at the very top, the same as my header, but later on I figured it out, but it wasn't intuitive right away and you can change it and reposition it. But I was able to add page numbers to my pages if I needed. You also can add objects and diagrams. I mean, I'm not sure if that's really useful for editing PDFs. Many times what it would be an image, you wouldn't probably use that to create diagrams. You can also add a page by clicking on the left and adding a page. What I didn't like that the page came in this really dark color and I had to figure out how to change the background of it. And then it does ask you, you want to change the background for the whole document or for just this page. Now, I could not do anything with any kind of forms and field options in my PDF. And specifically, I could not add signature, which was really disappointing. And I searched for it and all the documentation that came up, it was just not really helpful. It was like giving me signature templates, but not able to enter signature. Now, you could probably just insert image of your signature if you wanted to. So that's a walk around. Now, if you want to download the PDF, you go to the file and then download, and then it asks you how you want to download, what's the resolution. And once I open it, everything looked fine, exactly how I had it in the tool. There was no watermark from the tool. And then if you click on home, it actually will show you all the files that are currently in the tool that you have. So that's really helpful. So you can go back to it, let's say, if you want to make some additional changes. So overall, it was a pretty decent tool. So thanks so much for watching.